seriously on Believe Nothing. Hello. Tonight, human cloning. Is it possible? Is it desirable? This evening, What's the Big Idea is in Oxford to talk to Dr. Sheridan Brinsley, Burger King Professor of Microbiology at the Mississippi Institute of Technology, and Professor Adonis Canute. And this... Quadruple Professor Adonis Canute. <laughs> Quadruple professor and Nobel Prize winner, Adonis Kinu, this country's foremost authority. Listen up, I've flown 3,000 miles to debate cloning, not to pay homage to Adonis Knut's mighty ego. <laughs> My ego will never be as mighty as your stomach, Brinsley. I fear you've taken the title of intellectual heavyweight rather too literally. Professor Brinsley, can you explain your position? He can't cross his legs because his thighs are too fat. <laughs> I'm going to rise above that, though. <laughs> yeah, it's rather like a blimp. <laughs> Hey, you tea sipping son of a bitch! <laughs> Professors, please. Okay, okay. Look, like the song says, they all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They all laughed when Edison recorded sound. Yes, and we all laughed when you got stuck in the studio entrance. <laughs> we will be laughing on the other side of your face when I unveil the first human clone. Yes, and it will be laughing on the other side of its little mutant face when it realizes it's got three hands and no arms. So your objection to cloning is on practical grounds? No, Melvin. It's moral. For what if depraved meddlers like Brinsley do solve the problems of human cloning? Hmm? Do we each have an identical twin on sedated standby in case we require a kidney, a heart, an extra pair of testicles? <laughs> As for conquering death, how is our planet to cope with this population explosion of nouveau zombies? There'll be no room for babies to be born. Do you want to live in a world where lovely little babies are banned so those of us already here can live forever? Yes! <laughs> the uh, great British public seems to be on the side of Professor Brinsley. <laughs> Only because they've been subjected to a century of American cultural brainwashing. If you can use the words American and cultural in the same breath. <laughs> We're the last superpower. People want to be like us. Perhaps. But no one wants to be like you, Brinsley. Cloning? If it were up to me, there wouldn't even be one of you. <laughs> and then I have to telephone for a taxi while Melvin Bragg gets whisked off in the back of a ministerial Daimler. Though I suppose what he does in the privacy of his own limousine is his own business. <laughs> <clears throat> Why don't you take off some of your clothes, sir? <laughs> and let me relieve the tension. <laughs> Thank you, Albumen. I think I will. Sir. <laughs> I know. My shoulders feel like two tightly coiled Cumberland sausages. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I love the way you need me. <laughs> With a K, obviously. <laughs> Using a different sort of oil. Oh, it's a new organic lotion, sir. It's called uh, Milk of Amnesia. <laughs> it's very good. Where did you buy it? Or can't you remember? <laughs> Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> not interrupting, am I? Though, strictly speaking, I'd only be interrupting if I were to clamber on top of you. Oh, no, feel free to clamber, Hannah. I'd rather not. I'm going through something of a homophobic phase. Not that I have any objection in principle to men slathering each other with lubricants prior to penetration. Hannah, <laughs> there are no sexual undertones whatsoever in this scenario. <laughs> Father Rubberman. Oh. <laughs> I just wondered how the television debate went. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was rather a mismatch, I'm afraid. It's rather like Mike Tyson wrestling the Pope. One of my students was in the audience, and he said Sheridan Brinsley whopped your sorry ass. And what is the name of this former student, pray? <laughs> Adonis Canute, speak. You. Very well. I shan't be dining in tonight, Albumen. But I've got your lovely wing of skates, sir, with capers. I have some unfinished business to attend to. You'll have to caper alone. A 
pint of your best local foaming brew and a pewter tankard, if you please. Ye buxom wench. You're taking the piss. I intend to, as soon as you tell me where the bathroom is. If you want the urinals, follow your nose. <laughs> hmm. For several years, I was Bruce Forsyth's stunt double. What was he like? Oh, he was a hard taskmaster. Yeah, we got through seven hair weavers in one series of play your cards, right? Have man. Get this sponged off, will you? Yes. It's blood. Are you all right, sir? No, it's nothing. Just a small disagreement with an underdone steak. <laughs> Adelman, why is Dr. Awkward splayed half naked across my ottoman? Because I couldn't persuade her to take the rest of her clothes off, sir. <laughs> you tried? I tried my hardest. <laughs> well, thank you, but no, I'm not really in the mood. Are you saying that Albumen was grooming me for your return like some sort of junior concubine? Anna, of course not. You, a junior concubine? <laughs> Forgive me. So, you're Professor Canute. Inspector Aldis, CID. Fascinating. Will this take long because I have to translate the Quran into Icelandic by bedtime? <laughs> then I'll cut to the chase, whatever that means. I believe it's a term used in the film industry, particularly during the silent era. Thank when... you, miss. <laughs> Professor Canute, where were you at 9.45 tonight? At dinner with a friend. That's very interesting. God, you're easily pleased. <laughs> because you were seen at quarter to ten in the slug in sandwich. Oh, it's a crime now, is it, in New Labour Britain to visit a pub? <laughs> not that I did. No, it's not a crime unless whilst in said pub you did stab your academic rival through the neck with a marlin spike. Sheridan Brinsley is dead. What is a marlin spike, Inspector? It's a sort of spike. You use it to catch marlin. No, actually, that is a popular misconception. A marlin spike, one word, is a pointed tool used to separate strands of rope or wire. It is derived... I enjoy an impromptu round of call my bluff as well as the next man. <laughs> but if we can return to the point of my visit... Where were we, Sergeant? Uh, Professor Canut had just exclaimed, Sheridan Brinsley is dead. And I can't think of a more deserving victim. Ah, so you admit it? I'm admitting nothing, because I did nothing. So you deny it? I'm neither admitting nor denying, because to do either would be to indulge in the type of sloppy category error that has seen many a promising undergraduate rusticated before his or her first Christmas. <sighs> Read that back to me, Sergeant. <laughs> Professor Canute couldn't have done it, because he was here with me and Dr. Awkward all the time. I was giving them both one of my special massages. <laughs> one night, Doctor. What? Oh, yes. We were all lying together on SETI. That's right. <laughs> all right, you got away with it for now. But I'll be back, Canute, you nasty little misprint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for lying for me, Hannah. I'm touched. I just hope you can prove you were elsewhere when the heinous crime occurred. Oh, of course he was. He was at a restaurant eating steak which spurted blood. <laughs> All over his jacket. Oh, sir! You should have asked me to do Brinsley. I've still got my marlin spike somewhere. That's why I did not <laughs> kill Brinsley. Then where were you? I'm sorry. I can't tell you. And if I could, you'd never believe me. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> 
I heard someone in here and as Albumen goes shopping on a Tuesday morning and you're normally lecturing. I know. Lecture, lecture, lecture. Professor Canute tells the lesser mortals how to live their lives. What is good? What is right? Oh, ask Adonis Canute. He has all the answers. Are you sure you're quite well, Professor? Your hair looks different. <laughs> I slept in a haystack. <laughs> Were you hiding from the police? No. I just always wanted to sleep beneath the stars like a carefree young Byron. <laughs> and if I'm to spend the rest of my natural life in prison... You don't mean you did kill Sheridan Brinsley? <laughs> no. No. But the police all hate me since my Royal Commission on Institutional Incompetence proved the police radios cause brain damage. <laughs> Which explains why medieval witch hunters had a better clear-up rate. <laughs> So I'm throwing off the shackles of responsibility while there's still time and indulging myself in those things I've always wanted to do. Like this. Professor! Since intimacy is about to occur, mm-hmm. You may call me Adonis. Call me. Call you what? Hannah, obviously. Of course, Hannah. Of course, Hannah. Oh, Hannah. How I've hungered. How I've longed. How I've ached, craved, and hankered. Not necessarily in that order. Oh. Mm. Mm. Nothing, nothing. It's just penetrative sex is just so old hat. <laughs> Don't you read the Catholic Herald? <laughs> oh, sorry, sir, I forgot my loyalty card. Your loyalty is to me. Bugger off! You can't talk to Albion that way. I'll talk to him any way I wish. I pay his wages. Get out, Albion! <laughs> Go on, get out! <laughs> now, where were we? You had just thrust your tongue into my mouth, and I, against my better judgment, was scrabbling at your trousers like a deranged dormouse. <laughs> then assume the position. I'm sorry, I, I want to, but I can't. Is it I? No, I'm to blame. Forgive me, Hannah, but... the great Adonis Canute is impotent. So, there you have it. Or rather, you don't. <laughs> Afternoon. You've got a nerve coming in here. Why? I haven't been charged. I've got a cast iron alibi. Which is funny, because the murder weapon was cast iron too. Oh, it's still coming in. Is that a. Oh, yes. Brinsley's keeping an eye on it for me. <laughs> oh, Dash. I lost a button off my jacket the other day. Perhaps I left it in the gents. the professor humiliating me, but only when we're alone. That's the agreement. Don't be so hard on him. He's not himself. Oh, you, you, you're bound to take his side. You're all over him like custard over spotted dick. <laughs> Much good it did me. It's very strange. I've never known him to be impotent. <laughs> <laughs> professor! 
Professor, I was so worried. Uh, perhaps if you saw a psychosexual counsellor. What are you talking about? Abraham, where are my papers for the wretched Senate meeting? It's nothing to be ashamed of. Many great men in history have had negligible libidos. Well, that's right, sir. It is said that Hitler only had one. <laughs> oh, God! He's been here, hasn't he? Who? Oh. It's the police! Look, when I was here earlier, it wasn't me. But you mustn't tell anyone that either of us was here, or anywhere else come to that. Oh, my God! Who? It's spare you, in case anything happens to the first one. You should be flattered. You cloned Albumen. Yes, yeah, it wasn't too difficult once I'd mapped the whole of human DNA. But the Human Genome Project was only completed last year. Thousands of scientists on five continents. Yes, but I was working alone, so naturally I was much faster. <laughs> Abelman, you remember that day I persuaded you to let me circumcise you? With your new Stanley knife? It was raining, there was nothing on the television. You cloned yourself too, didn't you? Well, I would have thought that was obvious. It took a long time getting up the stairs. Hannah, you must get rid of them. All right, miss, where is he? Why should I tell you? Because we've got the murder weapon covered in Canute's fingerprints. We've got a stack of witness statements, including Des Lynham, who was passing at the time. <laughs> and we've got a button off his jacket recovered from the scene of the murder. So unless you want to be arrested as an accessory... Well, that depends on the type of accessory. While I wouldn't mind being a Prada handbag, I'd hate to be one of those car fresheners in the shape of a pine tree. Throw the book at her, Carol. <laughs> Which one, sir? There are so many. <laughs> All right, I'll take you to him. <sighs> so your clone murdered Professor Brinsley? Yes, so I'd get the blame. You've got to find him before he leaves the country. OK, sir. What's he look like? <laughs> Sorry, sir. I was just trying to lighten the moment. <laughs> All right, I'll alert me contacts. We'll stake out every airport, every seaport, and every other sort of port. Oh, well, then, you are irreplaceable. Thank you, sir. Which is why I made arrangements to replace you when the time comes. <laughs> I didn't realise I was so well in doubt, sir. You're not. I made improvements. <laughs> Dear Diary, sorry I haven't written for a couple of days, but it has been all go. Did you really think I'd just slink back to KwaZulu-Natal? Huh? <laughs> I've had it with living on a game reserve. I'm going to stick around and enjoy your trial. Big shot know-it-all professor gets sent to prison for life. <laughs> Fair enough. You ruined mine. Ruined it? I gave you life. If it wasn't for my genius, you'd just be a waste bin full of cuticles. Staked out, sir. Mm. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> oh, why did you have to do that, Albumen? We'll have to listen to his resentful, self justifying whining again. Untie me, Albumen. He's the clone. Oh, is that really the best you can do? Albumen, ask me a question he won't know the answer to. Right. What's my middle name? Maximilian. <laughs> Where was I taken hostage by Shiite militants in 1987? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. <laughs> You've done your research. I don't understand it. Professor Knut always goes bell ringing on a Wednesday afternoon. Oh, the wife used to be a keen cumpanologist. <laughs> Green, with yellow stripes. <laughs> Come in. Um, <laughs> you 
did you slip a hallucinogenic drug into my lunchtime pint, Sergeant? No, sir. I was afraid you'd say that. It's Adonis's clone. I can see that, miss. But which one? Shall I call the fingerprint boy, sir? Shut up, Carol. Look, Inspector. We're not exactly alike. <laughs> you don't care how much shame you bring on me, your creator, do you? Right. I admit it. I was born without genitals. <laughs> That's why I made this clone. Being devoid of reproductive kit, I decided to make myself a humunculus with enough for two. <laughs> Sadly, they came out smaller than average. What a load of bollocks. <laughs> so, don't listen to him. Hannah, you know I'm a real man, don't you? I'm so confused. Yesterday you recoiled when my slender fingers sought out your manhood. That was him! Teflon groin! <laughs> Quite a predicament, eh, Sergeant? We have the fingerprints, the clues, the witnesses. But if we can't tell them apart, we'll have to let them both go. You can't do that! He'll murder me! That man is a psychopath! No, Inspector, I've just remembered. There is a way to tell the difference. I knew the burden of having no visible sexual organs might drive him to do something desperate, so I... signed him. What? There is what looks like a mole on his left buttock, just inside the cleft. <laughs> it's a microdot. I've carried this with me everywhere since I first read Hound of the Baskervilles. And now, at last, expose his crack, Carol. <laughs> no! I... <laughs> oh. Yes, all right. I killed Sheridan Brinsley. <laughs> Damn you to hell, Father! You never played with me, you never read me stories, you treated me like a freak! To be fair, you were shaving by the time you were three. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I should never have doubted you. <laughs> I'll take it as a tribute to my genetic handiwork. Oh. There's just one thing I don't understand, Professor. What is it, my child? Why didn't you tell the police about the microdot right away? <laughs> because there is no microdot. I just made it up. Suppose he called your bluff, sir. Well, then I'd have been buggered. <laughs> Although not by him, obviously. <laughs>